Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. God was calling us here and we were like, we're coming. We're going to be obedient to God's call. For us, this was our place called there. The provision for the healing was in this place. And I know our provision for our ministry or what God wants us to do, our purpose is here too. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on discipleship, and I have this teaching entitled Discipleship, The Path to Freedom. I have it in CDs, also DVDs. And then we have a lot of testimonies that are in these videos of different people who have gone out and are making a difference. We have just all kinds of stuff. We'll give out more information at the end of our program. But for over a week now, I've been talking about the difference between just believing on Jesus so that your sins can be forgiven and you can go to heaven and continuing in the Word of God until you know the truth and it sets you free and you become a disciple. There is a difference between being a convert and a disciple. And I believe, based on my experiences over the last 50 years dealing with people, that the vast majority at least uh, half, and I believe it could be up to 80, 90 percent of all people who have believed on Jesus and gotten their sins forgiven. They are not disciples. They aren't even heading towards being a disciple. They have stopped at just being a convert, and they are just waiting on their time on this earth to be up, and then when they get to heaven is when their salvation really takes place. That is not what Jesus intended. That is a major mistake. You know, these scriptures right here that the Lord gave me, 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 2, it says, The things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And so this is the scripture that we based our Caris Bible College on. And God told me from the very beginning, when I first got really turned on to the Lord, I was witnessing to everything that moved. I was witnessing to people in restaurants, 7-Elevens, going out on the street, knocking on doors, and I was making converts. But after a year or so of that, I'd go back and meet some of the same people. And if I hadn't have been the one that prayed with them and led them to the Lord, I wouldn't have known they were a Christian. There wasn't enough evidence to convict them. They hadn't gone on. They hadn't become disciples. And the Lord spoke to me through John chapter 15, verse 16, where it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. My fruit wasn't remaining. If any of these people I prayed with and quote, unquote, led through the salvation prayer, if they truly got born again, it wasn't evident in their life. The fruit wasn't remaining. And God spoke to me in the very beginning and told me that, nope, I, I was called to make disciples. And so for 50 years, this is what we've been trying to do. And then for 25 years, 25 years ago, we started our Karis Bible College. And it's because of this verse that I'm supposed to take the things that God has taught me and commit them to faithful men and women so that not only those individuals can be changed, but so that they can go and teach others. It's not about you just receiving things individually. Although God does love you individually, He wants to use you to impact the world. Maybe you can't go to the other side of the world, but you can impact the world that you live in. You know, I spend about a million and a half dollars every single month on just television and radio time. And if I spent 10 times that much money, I still wouldn't affect some people that you know it doesn't matter how much money I spend or what I do. There are people that you know and that you influence that will never hear of me. And therefore, you need to reach out to your world. I'm going around the world. I'm doing all of these things, but you have a realm of influence over people, the people that deliver your mail, the people that you do business with, the people that you work with, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends. You have a realm of influence that there are people that will never hear of me or of any other minister unless you do it. You are the only Bible some people are ever going to read. And therefore, God wants me to take the things that He has shown me and commit them to faithful men and women so that you can teach others also. 
This is why we started our Caris Bible College. And I tell you, there's some awesome, awesome results. You know, I just want to take a, a little brief time. I'm going to come back at the end of the program, but I would like to show you a testimony of two of our graduates. Now, we've uh, changed their name to John and Elena because they are in a place that it's sensitive what they're doing. People are being put to death. Some of the people that they lead to the Lord get martyred because of it. And so we've had to change some things, some blur out some deals, but I tell you, it is phenomenal to see what they're doing and how God is using them. Watch this and I'll be right back. Well, before we came out here to Nepal, um, I honestly worked for a great company. Um, I worked in the healthcare industry and I had a, a job that I really enjoyed. I had a great company that I was working for. I felt like I was paid well. We were in a good place. Uh, we were prospering. Um, we, we were living in a good community. Yet we felt like we needed to abandon that and move to the nations. There can be any number of reasons not to follow God's plan for your life. When John and his wife Elena heard the calling to Nepal, that number was their three small children, ages four, two, and six months old. Would God preserve them in the face of earthquakes, imprisonment, even martyrdom? This is the story of how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries equipped a young family to abandon the American dream, to spread the gospel in a country where they themselves are considered criminals. This is the destiny story of John and Elena. The story begins not in the Himalayan mountains, but in a mountain range on the other side of the world, where a humble Bible college raises one of its first classes in the truth of God's unconditional love and grace. I actually went to Karis from 99 to 2001 and back then it was on the Robinson Street location. And my class wasn't really big. Um, it was kind of small. We had maybe about 20, um, maybe a little bit more than 20 students at that time. My time at Karis really set a foundation in me. God's word has to be my standard. Whatever I face, his word is true. His word is eternal. My best friend, Kenneth Clark, who attended Karis with me, started his own short-term missions organization, and he was really checking out DePaul to see if that was a place he could bring short-term teams. So he asked me, come with him, check it out, give my opinion, and I was really trying to just keep myself from breaking down the whole time. Uh, really sensed the Lord speaking to me about the people in Nepal, um, about what he was doing there. I was actually able to sit face-to-face -face with a young man who was the first believer out of his people group since they have existed here on planet Earth. Knowing that this young man could go back to his village and be martyred for his decision to forsake Buddhism and follow Christ was something that was so impacting for me. It was something that I knew that I couldn't just walk away from. He came back and said, what do you think? Do you want to move to Nepal? Our children were six months, two and four. My wife had never seen Nepal. The first words out of her mouth were, if this is what the Lord has for us, then we'll, we'll sell everything and we'll go. John and Elena followed the Holy Spirit's leading to Nepal. They quit their jobs, sold their belongings, to focus on the unreached villagers in the Himalayan mountains. It was here that John's foundation in God's Word would be put to the test, as he would need to find the balance between taking trips up into the mountains while raising a family in a spiritually dark environment. So life here in Nepal is very different to say the least. The challenges of raising a family in Nepal, there are many. Trying to cook food when there's no gas or power, trying to do laundry when there's no water. Our mode of transportation rather than a car is a scooter. We don't buy groceries for a week because there's no room and they don't last that long. We buy groceries for two days at a time. Kathmandu is now ranked as the third most polluted city in the world. 
It's dominated by the Hindu religion. Uh, there's also Tibetan Buddhism. But the vast, vast minority are Christian. Uh, they make up less than 2% of the population. We came here to focus on the Tibetan Buddhist people and the mountains that are unreached and without the gospel. Nepal is a closed country. It's illegal to convert people. So what I'm doing here could get me kicked out of the country or possibly even thrown in prison. As we go into these villages and people do become believers, most of them that we see um, end up being martyred for their faith. We really want these villagers to know the decision that they are making as they choose to follow Christ, and they do. So there's a lot of pressures that come with what I do in these villages to bring the gospel to people, and there's just a lot of challenge just living a life as a family and maintaining a sense of a close presence of the Lord. I mean, everything around us is screaming and shouting and worshiping false deities. I wake up every morning with my neighbors on every side of me, worshiping false idols, or lighting incense, ringing bells, doing puja. God equips you, and if God calls you to do something, there is a supernatural anointing on you, on that word, to get it done. When the Lord spoke to Peter and said, come, that very word, come, in Abel. My wife and I recently revisited Hardness of Heart. We really, really honestly needed to hear from the Lord continually. One, just to sense where our family and our children are, how they're doing, how they're coping, even being here as missionaries in Nepal, there's areas that we are hard to in our hearts and they can grow calloused depending on what we're sensitive to and, and what we're not sensitive to, what we focus on, what we don't focus on. We came to Nepal to focus on the Tibetan Buddhists or the Buddhist people that are in the mountains. That means travel often into the mountains to gain relationship, to gain favor, and to be able to share with the people. Well, typically when we come out to the villages, uh, one, it takes a lot of effort to get into these places to bring the gospel. It's one, one of the components and one of the reasons of why these people out here are unreached. We're on the trail for a good six to eight hours a day, trekking to get into these places. We're gaining lots of elevation. Pack on what you need and walk for a few days. And when you get there, stay for a few days, and then you have to pack up and you have to walk out. We are really involved and focus on developing different programs in remote villages, and they ultimately become platforms to gain trust and to bring the gospel in behind those. Depending on the areas that we go to, sometimes we can walk the trails for a couple days, and sometimes we can spend over a week on our feet trying to reach these villagers. It takes a long time to develop relationships with the villagers, but there's other tools that we use also to not only develop relationships, but to be able to explain the gospel to them in a very cultural manner. This is not a Western religion, that Jesus is just not for the white man of the West, that he loves him and he's got this free gift of grace and forgiveness for each one of them if they just would believe and forsake their other foreign gods. John's determination to make every second count reached a whole new level in 2015, when an earthquake destroyed a village in a valley where he spent much of his time building relationships and sharing the gospel. April 2015, Nepal had an incredibly powerful earthquake that really, really affected this nation. One valley that I went to often experienced a huge landslide, destroyed that village instantly. And there were massive, massive amounts of casualties and many of those people I had personal relationship with. I remember sitting at the table and we had some friends over for lunch and the younger kids were playing in the side room and we're sitting there eating and I just barely feel something. And I just looked up and I said, oh, an earthquake. The earthquake went from just a really slight shaking to just a violent, violent shaking. I ran to get my kids, and by the time I got to them, the house was shaking so hard, couldn't walk anymore. I remember having to grab onto the door frames and just literally pull myself into the rooms to get where our kids were. My wife was already there, and she gathered the kids, and we just huddled against the wall. So we're just chanting, Jesus, 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 because there's nothing else we could do. We cannot run. We can't escape it. We're stuck in this house, and it's just shaking violently. And I remember thinking in that moment, 
God, if you don't help us, we won't make it. We will not survive if you don't save us. When the shaking stopped, you're just kind of in shock. And of course, go, 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 get out of the house, get out of the house. And so you start to run out the house and we ran out and we realized that all the walls that surrounded everyone's properties had fallen except for the walls in our house. We all ran out of the house into an open field that was next door. Multiple, multiple aftershocks and earthquakes on that day. I remember running through the streets, trying to find our other friends and just making sure that they were okay. So we spent the next two weeks living in the field with our neighbors. The rain is coming through the tent. We're laying on a mat and our feet are in puddles around us. Packs of dogs are fighting in the field and they're falling onto us in the tent. Jamie and I have been through things and I guarantee you in the natural there was no reason to continue. We were, it looked like we were digging a hole. It was getting deeper. It didn't look like things were working out. And the only reason I didn't quit is because I didn't have any quit in me. When there wasn't anything positive in the physical realm to encourage me, I'd just go to the Lord. And I mean, God will keep you encouraged. After the earthquake, Andrew Walmack Ministries really got behind us as a family financially. We were well provided for, yes, but we were able to provide for the people we knew, specifically those affected most by the earthquake. It was a huge blessing for us to be supported by Andrew Womack after the earthquake because it allowed us to show God's love and support to so many others. Their generosity made a huge impact on the lives of the people and honestly really helped us in our relationship with these unbelievers and the people that we know and continue to have a major part in their lives. It allowed us to continue to impact them, to continue to show God's love for them. That provision was greatly provided by AWM. The things that I learned at Karis put such a foundation in my life. It has allowed me to walk through the hardships that we've experienced here as a family. Just to know that I can trust God at His word above everything else. I love that my children have been able to maintain a sense of innocence. We're here and we're doing this and there is a lot of darkness around us, but yet they've been able to maintain a real sense of who God is and learning about God and knowing God. Confident that God is preserving and protecting his family, John has continued to take trips into the Himalayan mountains where Jesus has given him unprecedented favor with the locals. Going through these villages, people know me by name. They call me brother. They'll embrace me and, and hug me, which is not really a part of their culture. It's like the Lord has just really neutralized all of that. Often, I think people are fearful to step out because they, of the unknown. The truth is, is we can step out into anything with God because God is with us of the unknown. Sometimes you're going to run into oppositions. You're going to have things that, that just sometimes ruin your day. But you have to trust God um, in His Word, that His Word will not return void. So I want to just give you a little run through what it's like when we get into the village. So in here, uh, we have a typical dining area. So everyone just kind of gathers around these tables over here. You know, we really enjoy getting into these guest houses and just being a part of the families here, including them in what we're doing, um, getting to know them better. So uh, most rooms accommodate two people. So they'll have um, two beds in them. So this one right here, last night was probably near zero. Um, and so it was pretty cold outside, um, but these over your sleeping bag, keep you a little bit warmer and make it a little bit more comfortable for your stay. All right, and just for fun, I need to show you guys the bathrooms and um, what things are kind of typically like here. Make sure no one's inside first. But uh, so this one's actually kind of special. It's got a normal squatty potty um, that is very typical to this part of the world. And this one actually has a shower, which is uh, can be very cold sometimes, can be very warm. Um, most people don't opt for them because the weather's, it's, it's too cold outside and really enjoy a shower anyways. The gospel changes everything. 
And if you don't hear it, there's not a chance to be changed. And so it's very important for CBC students to share what they have, because how else will people know? How else will people be changed? How else will people have the opportunity to have their lives transformed unless people go and share? Those who support AWM play such a vital part in bringing the gospel to people. It's made an impact on my life, it's made an impact on our family's life, and it's making an impact on a nation that's been void of the gospel. And God is bringing his truth to people who've never known his name. John and Elena are just one example of the Karis graduates making disciples around the world. To our friends and partners, we say thank you for helping one family in Nepal trust God's word in the midst of martyrdom, imprisonment, and natural disaster, and come out victorious. So as you saw in this video, this couple, you know, they have just given up a lot to be able to go out and touch others. That's what a disciple is. A disciple is not a person. It's all about just you getting what you want. But you go beyond yourself and you go into a relationship with God and you fall so in love with God that you want to share him with other people. And, and just as you saw this couple, they have uprooted their life. They've moved to the other side of the world. Now, they are now back in the United States, but for a number of years, they did this. And you saw the devastation of the earthquake and how an entire village was wiped out and people were killed. But also, some of the people that they have led to the Lord, they lost their life because the Buddhist will not allow them to convert to Christianity. And some of them have been martyred. I tell you, this, these are modern day heroes. And you know, these are people that have gone beyond themselves and they are living for God and living for other people more than they are living for themselves. And this is what God's will for every one of you is. Again, I know that there's people watching this program who you're saying, well, I'm not a, I'm not a minister. I'm not a full-time Christian. I'm a part-time Christian. I'm just saved and I'm going to heaven. But no, God doesn't want me to... He may not want you to go to Nepal. He may not want you to do what I'm doing. But God wants you to be totally committed unto him. Just as these verses said, Jesus said, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. You can't claim to be a disciple of Jesus. You might be a convert. You might be saved and on your way to heaven, but you are not a disciple if you are saying, God, I'm not going to serve you any more than I am right now. You cannot ask me to do this. You just can't put any limitations on God. And I know some of you think this is restricted. I'd be giving up so much. Man. You know, Jesus went on to say in Mark chapter 10, there is no man that hath left house, father, mother, brother, sister, lands for my sake, but what you will receive a hundredfold in this life with persecutions and in the world to come everlasting life. Jesus promised that anything that you ever give up, you will get it back a hundred times over. You know, I've given up a lot of things to serve the Lord, but man, I have received it back many, many times over anything that I've given up. I would recommend it. Andrews Bible College, Karis Bible College, is celebrating its 25th anniversary by giving new students at the Woodland Park campus a $250 tuition discount when you register by May 10th. Go to karisbiblecollege.org slash discount to register today. I knew, okay, I have to be here. There's no doubt in my mind that I have to be here. If you want answers to the questions that you have, come here and just dive into His Word. God is here. The Holy Spirit is transforming people's lives here. When you come to Karis Bible College, you are truly going to experience your life changed. No matter what age you are, where you come from, I would recommend Karis to anybody. It, I mean, it radically transformed your life. It's just never going to be the same because I went to Karis. God has put it on my heart to make disciples, and the best way I have of doing that is through our Karis Bible College. We not only have our main campus in Woodland Park, Colorado, but we have campuses scattered all over the world 
We've got a special discount for anybody who will come to our main campus. There's a $250 tuition discount. Come and let us help you discover who you are in Christ and who He is in you. It'll change your life. Go to charisbiblecollege.org slash discount to register today. Today's series is an abbreviated version of Andrew's teaching titled, Discipleship, the Path to Freedom. This six-part teaching in its entirety is available as a CD or DVD album recorded live from Andrew's 2017 Summer Family Bible Conference. Also available is the Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course. This course is designed so that anyone can reach an unbeliever, disciple a new believer, or grow with others in the Lord. Also available today is the brand new Destiny Stories Volume 3 DVD. Each of the three Destiny Stories volumes contain testimonies of people whose lives were transformed as they pursued God's will. These valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Or, if you prefer, you can get them as part of the Discipleship Package, which includes the Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course, Destiny Stories Volumes 1, 2, and 3, in your choice of either the CD or DVD album of Discipleship, The Path to Freedom. This package has a catalog value of $120, but you can get it today for only $85. Also, Andrew would like to make his notes on discipleship available to you as a free gift. Go to awmi.net to download your free digital copy today. You can find out more about Karis Bible College or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. I'd like to invite you to come and join me this summer for our Summer Family Bible Conference. It's July the 1st through the 5th, and we are gonna have a lot of different speakers. We have a youth ministry. It will bless you. It will encourage you and entertain you, and it's just gonna be a great time for the entire family. Remember, it's July the 1st through the 5th, 2019, at our facilities in Woodland Park, Colorado. I want to let you know that we are doing what we call a live Bible study. Every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, we are broadcasting from our facilities here in Woodland Park, and we are just sharing the Word. I teach for about 25 to 30 minutes, and it's actually live. You can text in your questions. You can call and ask for prayer. You can get product. But we will answer as many of your questions as we can, about 25, 30 minutes worth of teaching and maybe 25 minutes worth of answering questions. It's just a great interactive thing. Every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. 